Well, this week started with Willie Mac and Ninja Mac looking at each other and going, oh, hi, we have the same name. We should be a tag team. Now, this kind of does tie into what they did seven days ago. But also, I assume, was inspired by Batman versus Superman. Also, hello, my friends, and welcome to another Ring of Honor day. It doesn't make any sense what's a Ring of Honor day, but it does mean we're going to take the finger of power and we're going to go through the latest ROH show and decide, well, was it any good or did it absolutely suck? There's no middle ground here because we're wrestling fans. Let's up those downs. Madness then came to Ring of Honor because it was Phoenix versus Gringo Loco. And I tell you, it was totally bonkers. Oddly, Phoenix started with kicks and I was all like, fly you fool. When as soon as those words came out of my mouth, he did this springboard dive. And I'd be like, I would do, pig. That'll do. Phoenix also hit this wonderful frog splash. And given how many people are doing that in 2023, I think one day we're going to rank them. And maybe you'd like to do that in the comments. And this is when Gringo just got fed up at this and he grabbed the masked man. And he floored it. He also busted his face with a face buster when Phoenix kind of hit his rewind button. Maybe this happened by accident because he then went back to the splashes. I was like, well, I guess it is a good move. You're taking your tum-tum and you're putting it into somebody else's tum-tum and everybody needs a tum-tum. This then reminded me of Daryl Hannah. And no, that is not a topical reference at all. When all of a sudden, both these guys were trying to hit each other with cutters, but they weren't able to hit the other one with a cutter. You really do have to go and see this hurricane run that Phoenix did at the end of this sequence too. I mean, this guy, you know the deal. He don't make any sense. Two plus two equals potato. Gringo also hit this amazing destroyer for a near fall. But much like a lot of this episode of Ring Honor, you just knew he wasn't going to win, especially because Phoenix is involved with bigger storylines. So eventually he did the big old roll. He finally got his cutter. One, two, three. This is one of those matches when winners and losers don't really matter. It was just so damn fun. I don't know how they do it. Up. The wingmen were then on Ring of Honor. I was so happy. Because this is Ryan Nemeth and Peter Avalon, and they are just the most wonderful goofs. And they went after the Iron Savages. And not only did they do this, they were like, oh, oh you go to the gym, big deal. <laughs> Lots of people go to the gym. I was like, of all the people you could have chosen to pick on. But here's the deal. They now need to be on ROH TV every single week. Otherwise, I'll be upset. When, man, we just had the best match. For me. Because on the one side of the ring, we had Willow Nightingale. And as we have talked about a lot, she has so much damn potential and is on a winning streak at the moment. But on the other, we had Maddie Renkowski, who I think was making her Ring of Honor debut, at least ever since it came back to TV. And I have shared a locker room with Maddie Renkowski when I went over to Texas and performed for MPW. So I just thought this was really cool. And they had a good match. Maddie also established herself quickly by choking Willow. I suppose sometimes you do have to break the law if you want to win. When she got the ring skirting and she put it over her head so she could do some strikes. And lots of wrestlers doing this recently. I don't really know why. You're just messing things up. Nightingale then fired back with a spine buster, meaning she busted somebody's spine. But when she went for the bomb of power, Maddie kind of wriggled out of it. And I was like, oh, here we go. And then she got pounced. Whoops. This did open the door for the big old power bomb, so Willow got another win. I think that's six in a row. But let's continue to push her and let's get Rankowski back on television because I do think she has something. So this is another reason why I like this show. You just see brand new people all the time and you get to do this with your hands. Like a modified version of the Bushwhackers up. Which is when the Iron Savages <laughs> did indeed accept the wingman's challenge. I mean, this is like telling Mike Tyson, you'll see him in the parking lot. Fair play to Peter and Ryan, though, because they were so much fun during this match. And when they did get a chock block and they got just a little bit of offense, they were over the moon. Otherwise, you can figure out what happened here. They got absolutely broken in two by two very large men. The finish as well was absolutely ludicrous because these savages actually did an electric chair drop onto both of these guys when they were on the floor. Now... I know what wrestling is. I know it's predetermined. But if I was down there, <laughs> I'd be looking up going, please don't get this wrong. It's absolutely terrifying. As I've already said, feature the wingmen more. Sometimes I just want to smile. Sometimes I just want goofy wrestling for life. Up. You also just want something different and fun every now and then, which is why the next match worked, because it was Zach Clayton and Cole Carter taking on Christopher Daniels and Matt Seidel. I mean, those two matches couldn't be different from each other. The reason this worked too is because you have separate type of guys. On the one hand, you have the experienced ROH chap. And then the other, you have people that kind of have some experience, but they're also still finding their way. So you can put them in a big pot and get some wrestling out of it. Daniels and Seidel were on top to begin with because, of course, they do have the wrestling knowledge. When Carter was like, well, I know what to do. He used the ropes to cut off Matt so Zach could just slam him with his lariat. I'm like, yeah, 
That worked. It also eventually led to the big hot tag for Daniels, and just think how many of these he must have done, but he still gets it right. And even though he went for the Angels' wings and failed, this is when Matt Seidel was like, oh, actually I've recovered now, and he jumped back in. He also dived onto Carter, who was on the floor, because wrestlers just can't help themselves in the modern day, when Christopher Daniels hit the best moonsault ever, and he got the one, two, three. Now, admittedly, and we're going to talk about it in a second, sometimes on ROH you just get victories. You're like, what was the point of that? But this was actually going to tie to something later, and it was probably the best thing on the show. We'll get to it. Uh, but yes, I do want to talk about it now, because I do think this is the biggest negative when it comes to ROH, is that you can kind of telegraph every single match. So what I think we need to do eventually is have well-known wrestler versus not so well-known wrestler, and not so well-known wrestler has to win. I mean, it's pro wrestling. You can do whatever you want. And from that moment on, we'd be like, well, I'm sure so-and-so will get the W. But I'm not 100% sure. So the wrestling really does rock. I mean, you never get a bad performance, but I am going to give it a down. Because again, we grade on a curve. I just think we need to spice things up. When that did kind of shift, because it was Miranda Alizé versus Lady Frost. Now, the reason this one was different is because they're both kind of on similar levels. Although I would say Lady Frost is just a little bit above. But if you had given either of them the victory, they can probably use that for something else. I tell you, I had to prove a point, though, which I think they did do, and we got a Hurricane Rana really early on, when Miranda started talking too much. And I was like, you probably shouldn't do this. Because Frost just came back with this big old knee, and she did the cartwheel cannonball. Elise still came back with the Tiger Driver for a 1-2-R, but when she went to break some necks, because she was going to hit the neck breaker, Milady was able to get to the top rope, and she hit that corkscrew moonsault. And I tell you, a lot of people do this, I think it may be the best one. I also think it's called the temperature drop. <laughs> so I was on the floor because I love this stuff. This is the kind of stuff I want in my sports entertainment. But once again, you know the deal. I don't want to repeat myself. Up. The randomness kept on coming too because it was then Cheeseburger and Eli Isom taking on Serpentico, if it was Serpentico, we don't know, and Angelico. Now, shout out to my girlfriend who thought this was an actual cheeseburger, because I was watching it and she wasn't paying attention. She just heard it on commentary. And I tell you, that is something that we should do. And kind of bizarrely, this was basically a squash. I mean, it didn't go very long at all. Isom was able to get the old power tag, and he was doing all these crazy dives, because again, he knows what modern wrestling fans want. But eventually, Cheeseburger basically got caught in the lead lock, and Helico was like, ha, 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 I'm going to rip off your leg. And even though he is some food and doesn't need legs, he decided that given that he has got them, he'd rather keep them. And he tapped out. So again, all of these are just so much fun to watch, but we do need some wiggle jiggle here and there. But I am now become Bill Murray in Groundhog Day, and we don't need to do that. But look, it did the job. Up. When we got super serious, because not only was Zack Sabre back on Ring of Honor defending his New Japan TV title, but he was taking on AR Fox, and they went out there and said, shall we go crazy? And the answer was yes. We also stuck to the 15-minute time limit, which I'm a huge fan of, because it makes this match feel fresh instantly, and I like fresh stuff, I like bread. And as soon as the bell rung, AR Fox went, I think I can go 100 miles per hour. Let's see how long I can keep it up. He also did this big old Superman dive, but eventually Zack started working over on his arm, honestly. It's just so brutal. At one point, he was just stomping on it. I was like, do you think there's money in there? Because if there is, something very strange has happened. He was also able to stop a dive from AR Fox, but this is when he was able to hit with a kick. That was super. And he busted out a DDT. So Zack Sabre Jr. is like, well, I can do a DDT too. So we had dual DDTs. We then got into the near falls. But look, I know I'm saying the same thing over and over. But I need to get it across to you. AR Fox was never going to defeat New Japan Zack Sabre Jr. on a Ring of Honor show when he locked in the stretch muffler. I think he calls like the napalm death lock, which you wouldn't want to be in. And he got the tap out victory. Now, look, I am going to give this an up. But the fallout was the best stuff. I don't see this coming. Because I keep going on, we need more sports entertainment in our Ring of Honor, because I'm a massive nerd. So after Zack was like, I am the greatest champion ever, Samoa Joe walked down and goes, oh yeah, I've got a championship, and I actually think it belongs to me. All of a sudden, they were being interrupted by Christopher Daniels and Matt Seidel, and I was like, what was going on? And here's the long and the short of it. Zack was like, actually, Samoa Joe, I think you're a cool cat, and I will be you, friend. So why don't we team up to take on these guys? And listen, if you can beat us, you can then have a TV title shot. And I thought about this and I was like, yeah, that's really good. This is exactly what we needed. Just some cool little angles here where you can take your plug and stick it into the socket, which is not a euphemism. And I will take all four of these matches. I think everyone will be super duper good.
up. When Dalton Castle and Brandon Boyd tried to get their revenge from last week, and well, they failed. This means they are bad friends, and I bet Brent is really sad as he is in a local medical facility. But they were taken on the gates of Agony. Now look, you could already figure this one out. Brendan got beaten up for a while when Dalton Castle got the hot tag. And this Dalton Castle man, I know he's been doing it a long time, but he totally gets his character, he totally gets what's to do, he hits really good German suplexes, Guten Tag, and I think we should do something more then. I also think the Gates of Agony must have been watching Dynamite because when they did have Brendan, they were just throwing him around like Big Bill was doing to Darby Allen. It still makes me chuckle. How do you throw an adult male this hard? Toa Leona also got crotched at one point, so keep that in mind. If you are taking on a giant, go after their penis. And basically, eventually the boy went to do a dive and Khan caught him and just threw him into the ring apron. I checked. It's the hardest part of the ring. It also meant he ended up in no man's land when the gates of agony gave him this crazy double face buster. I mean, they just chucked him right onto his skull and he got the one, two, three. And honestly, this is just big men slapping man meat and they're so good at it. Probably should be on AEW or something. I enjoyed this mostly because it was entertainment and absolute death. Up. Dane Taylor then confirmed he is now buddies with the workhorse men after they came to an agreement, I suppose, last week because they were having a match. And they were taking on the Midnight Heat and Shafe, who I admit I don't know much about. And I think they too were making their Ring of Honor debuts ever since it came back. The thing is, though, because we don't really know them, but we do know Taylor, JD, Jake and Anthony Henry. This was just an absolute showcase for them. <laughs> the finish was hilarious. Because not only did we get dual brain busters, which should never be a thing, why are we breaking that many brains? All of a sudden, Shane Taylor hit that package pile driver. I was like, if we consider that one move, we may need to do some shifting around. Because that definitely was the most devastating move in all of sports entertainment. What I do like about Ring of Honor and AEW, to be honest with you, is that we are building a load of teams now, especially trios. And given we have those titles, they need to be defended more. Well, put your hands together. Uh, this is when Stu Grayson finally had a chat with Dunch and Vincent, and I was like, why didn't you do this ages ago? Because they've been being goobers for ages. Anyway, they were like, well, I know you're back with the Dark Order, and I know they brought you back, but we don't think they're very good for you, and they provided no justification whatsoever. The thing is, Grayson was kind of intrigued by this, and he wants to keep an eye on it. I wanted to be like Stu. This will be a really bad idea, but once again, it's a story, and I like stories. Which is when Mercedes Martinez returned. Pretty sure she's been injured, so hopefully she's back to 100%. Her opponent was Ashley de Amboire as well, and she has been everywhere recently. I couldn't help it. I was like, oh man, I bet it's going to be another squash. Actually, they had quite the back and forth. Martinez was able to score with the three suplexes, which is becoming 2023's Canadian Destroyer, in the sense that everybody is doing them. And when Ashley started to fight back with punches, she got spine busters. Uh -oh. She was able to counter a suplex into the most devastating move in all of sports entertainment, the surprise roll-up. But when that didn't work, she continued to lay these blows in on Martinez. I thought it looked pretty good. It was only eventually going to go one way, though, so Mercedes eventually curb-stomped her and locked in the Dragon Sleeper. I don't know what she does to that move, but it looked absolutely horrible to Amboire. Tapped out. I'm going to throw it up in here as well, though, because we need to continue to build challenges for Athena, which is what we did here. And don't forget, in terms of MVPs in 2023, the ROH Women's Champion deserves a shout out. When we got one hell of a main event. I mean, it was a fight without honor, which sounds cool instantly, but it was also Action Andretti and Darius Martin taking on the kingdom. And we have been building this for ages. And holy crap, did they go 100%. But they were all fighting on the ramp way to begin with because they do hate each other. When a chair was involved, and that's right, it was being chucked into people's faces. And I was like, what are we doing, people? Have we forgotten? Matt Taven was then dropped toehold into the steel when Martin decided to drop off his back to cause even more chaos. And then the weapons, my friends. <laughs> the weapons, where were they coming from? Maria Clintus, who was at ringside too, decided she didn't like any of this. So she did cast distraction when Matt Taven drop kicked a ladder <laughs> into Darius Martin's face. I mean, what the hell are you doing? Maria then hit a low blow, which is when Mike Bennett saw his opportunity to wreck people with chairs, when all of a sudden we had a trash can. And what happened to the trash can? We spine busted somebody into it. I'm gonna tell you, if you did this in your real life, your garbage men would not be very happy. We then got some tables out because of course we did, but beforehand Andre hit this incredible Arabian press into everybody on the outside. And in case we hadn't escalated enough, we continued to escalate. Because Action saw that these pieces of wood were in the perfect position he put Taven on it, 
basically hit a springboard 450. I was like, do they know this is just a random episode of Ring of Honor television? My word, fair play. Then it then threw him through a table when Maria got a pipe and started whacking people. And I was like, how is that not attempted murder? But of course she had to get hers. So when Bennett went to throw a forearm, Martin got out the way and he accidentally hit his other half. I don't think she's gonna like that. Taven then went into another chair and just to end this as stupidly as we could, Action Andretti and Darius Martin did a doomsday device off a ladder. Now a doomsday device is terrifying enough when you do it from the top rope, but they went, ha ha, that's not high enough for me. Why don't we go a few more feet upwards? Hilariously, they shook hands afterwards too, which made no sense, but actually it did, because of course it was a fight without honor, but they'd given so much they now had honor for one another. That's that silliness I like in wrestling. And you got to go and see this today. Massive round of applause for all four guys. They gave us everything and then some. You could feel their passion. I loved it. Up. Which brings us to the end of another episode of Ring of Honor. And we are going to give it up. And as always, let me know what you think about in the comments. And as a small spoiler, if you are here, there are some changes coming to ups and downs soon. When AEW Collision launches... Watch this space. Also, please do like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Go to whatculture.com. Make sure you watch another video. And of course, say hello at WhatCulture WWE and Simon Miller 316. Thank you for joining me as always. Thank you, wrestling, for existing. Whatever that means. Huh? Goodbye.